Support Roller March Unfiltered, be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. One of the folks I want to be sure you heard from, president of Ghana. Now, uh, he is not necessarily given, first of all, he came to the United States. His Excellency Nana Akufo Addo, he came to the United States in September 2018, announcing the year of return, but he hasn't given many interviews. This is the only interview that he's given to the American journalists on his major initiative. Here is my exclusive interview with the President of Ghana. President Adu, I surely appreciate you sitting down with me. Thank you so very much. Thank Good you very you. much. You came to the United States in 2018 to announce a year of return. Are you even shocked with the response uh, this initiative has gotten, not just from African Americans, uh, but folks in the UK, folks in Canada, and from other countries? I don't know whether shock is the word, but certainly, um, 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 let me say, it's more than I expected. I had hoped that it would have a big resonance but it has, I think, had a much bigger resonance than I had anticipated. It's a very welcome one. If you want us to use the word shock, all right. But it's a very welcome shock, and I'm very happy that the initiative has evoked the response that it has. Obviously, there, there's an economic piece to it uh, in terms of uh, for the tourism industry uh, here in Ghana, but also for so many people, it has been deeply personal. Individuals, they, they've shed tears, uh, the, the historical uh, impact as well. Um, what did you What did you want people, what did you want and what do you want them to get out of this experience uh, of returning uh, to Ghana, many of them for the first time? I think really something quite simple, a recognition that really we are all the same. We are from one family. We are now divided by the ocean, the Atlantic, and of course, by the history, very tragic history, but that essentially we are still one family. And I'm hoping that this whole year of return thing would allow people to see that and therefore give us an opportunity to really solidify the relations between us on both sides of the Atlantic and see ourselves as part and parcel of one African family. I think it's important for us it's important for our sense of self-worth. It's important for our, our sense of identity. And certainly it is important for any effort that we're making to empower ourselves in the world. Uh, the first president of this country, uh, President Nkrumah, educated at a historically black college in the United States. There's always been uh, this relationship 
between uh, many African leaders and HBCUs uh, and America as well. What do you hope comes out of this in terms of uh, a better or different relationship with African-Americans, especially when it comes to commerce, when it comes to investment, when it comes to partnership? I think once the, uh, the, the acknowledgement, the recognition, the awareness that we are part and parcel of the same family, on that you can build everything else. You can build cultural exchanges, commercial exchanges, investment cooperation. A whole edifice can be founded once that uh, fundamental uh, base is recognized. We are part and parcel of the same family. Then on it, you can build all the relations that suggest themselves. And that, of course, is building economic relations. At the end of the day, uh, people are identified by the level of prosperity, the level of development that um, they've attained. And I think that together, if we forge this relationship, we can assist ourselves and reinforce ourselves to be able to lift ourselves up. And uh, I think it has the possibility of taking us to a new space and therefore a new a recognition by the world of who we are as, as a race, as a people. This morning at the breakfast, you talked about um, um, moving forward. And one, what, what was really interesting to me when you talked about the impact of uh, the Chinese diaspora right. on China and its development. And as I was listening to that, what, what you were essentially saying is that, uh, look, when you look at the African diaspora, there is an opportunity here to really uh, take this country, take this continent to a whole new level with the folks who are part of the diaspora. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um... The, 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 those who went to America and the Caribbean are part of the most developed economy in the world today, especially the American economy. And my understanding would be that if this connection, if this awareness is there, there's a lot that can come from that end for this process of our mutual development. And I, for me, this is one of the the main outcomes I'm looking at, how we can join the, the bridge across the Atlantic, how we can forge it in such a way that trade and investment and commerce come both sides of the Atlantic together. How do you also yeah. see um, changing or, or working to change people's view was really between their ears? So for instance, for African-Americans, uh, uh, our view of Africa has been informed by white supremacy. Um, African nations, colonization. Uh, I spoke at a church on Christmas Day here, and I said that really what is required is, is a massive reprogramming as to how we see ourselves versus what we've been taught about ourselves. And this is why it is so important to have this personal physical contact, for people to come here and see where we are, and in the process, of course, a lot of our own people will be going across as well and see how the conditions under which black people live in America. But you cannot ever, ever escape the significance of that personal contact. The coming of lots of people from the Caribbean and from the, from the Americas here was tell them that much of what they have been fed much of the views of Africa that they have been fed do not correspond to anything, uh, the, the reality. We are not, in fact, just swinging on trees here. That There's a lot of development that is taking place here. And also, yeah. unlike what yeah. was said by uh, Donald Trump, these are not shithole countries. I says, uh, absolutely not. I said so at the time to him, that I thought that was an unfortunate, an unfortunate statement for an American leader to make. We're not, Ghana said is not a shithole country. And as I say, the, the coming over is a way of opening up the consciousness, the awareness. And that is what you're talking about when you say what is between here. Mm -hmm. It is a question of the awareness, the expansion, the consciousness, and seeing that really 
people here, like you over there, we're all part and parcel of the same human race. We're part and parcel of the human family. And in our particular case, we have the added uh, proximity of all being black people. And myself, I think that if we're able to force this relationship, the beginnings is what we're seeing now. You spoke about Kwame Nkrumah in the early days. I think that we have advantages here which were not present in this time. Mm -hmm. Communication, especially, and all the, the new technology that connects people. All of that, if we bring all of that into play, we have the opportunity really to build a really new, new, new relationship that can be very strong, which we can benefit from you on that side us on this side as well. Well, communication does, is important. Uh, when I met the uh, Asante King, uh, there were several individuals who uh, work at the palace who saw me and they say, I see you on YouTube, Facebook. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're gonna make sure you meet the king. And so, so it has been interesting traveling the country. I've been to several different cities. We've been shooting lots of interviews and individuals yeah. who, 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 not necessarily who saw me when I was on CNN and I haven't been there in six years, but who are seeing me on the internet, that's how we're, and are seeing the conversations, the stories that we're doing. And certainly when we take this back, being able to show that, to give people a different view that's unfiltered, which is also the name of my show, because it's, it's not a matter of uh, uh, do, doing it through somebody else's uh, lens, right. really through this perspective. Yes, and that is, I think, also the other very important aspect of the CEO of Return that we have a way so that we can tell our stories to each other ourselves without the filter of third parties. So that what you come, you see here in Ghana are your own impressions. They're not the impressions that have been imposed on you or forced on you or which have influenced you, but your own direct personal sensory perceptions of what is going on. And I think it's very, very important in when you're trying to build a relationship of sincerity and integrity, then it should be informed mostly by the personal responses, reactions that you, that, that you get from being amongst people, from interacting with people. And I'm hoping that this uh, year of return and that we find a, a, a way which we can build on it to maintain this interchange this intercourse as a permanent feature of our lives gotta get your thoughts on several western african nations saying they're not going to use the cfa uh and it's interesting um i had the former ambassador to the african union on my show several times and she's really been talking about africans africans being independent uh and really forging his own path in his economy you gave you gave us made comments uh when you were in, uh when the french president where you made it clear Stop looking at Africa in terms of development aid, look, uh, well, in terms of charity, look at this in terms of investment. And so I think those two, what you said then and then that action they just took really speaks to saying, no, 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 we are seeing ourselves and protecting ourselves in a much different way, especially with this. And we have to, we have to just, it just doesn't make sense that the richest continent in the world should be inhabited by the poorest people on the globe. It doesn't make any sense. And it is largely because the relationships that have been forced both in colonial and post-colonial times that ties us down and makes the exploitation of our resources benefit people outside the continent and not ourselves. I find the decision that the French, um, the so-called Francophone African states have taken in Wema now to want to, to chart an independent path for their currency, an extremely positive and uh, significant step in the efforts we're making to integrate the continent, create the single market, create a single currency. I think mean, they've, they've shown a lot of courage in turning their back on 50 years of post-colonial history and now decided to chart their own way independently of France. And it's an extremely important, very, very significant step that they're taking and a very welcome one. Um, Everything that we require to bring prosperity to our people is here, except the systems that we have unfortunately allowed to dominate our lives. The time has come for us to free ourselves of those systems, use our resources for ourselves, look a little bit more inward than we have been doing. 
recently and seeing that the opportunities for development are right there in front of us. Mm -hmm. What we need is a mental and intellectual organization to make sure that those, uh, those, these resources are, are used in, in a really positive and progressive manner. How do you see African Americans helping with that? African Americans as being part of the African family. And once they wake up to the uh, idea that there is this huge reservoir of people, of talent, of resources, uh, that, that exists in the, on the continent which, to which they can fit themselves so easily. I think it could be a major, major incentive for people in all in, in, in the entertainment world, in the business world, in, in the, those who are in agriculture, the, uh, in, in the colleges, in, in, the, in academia. All of these can all come together and work towards this new uh, uh, the word, some of these words sometimes sounds a little bit uh, grandiose. You talk about renaissance, but I can see the possibility of a new, a new rebirth and revival of, 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 of the black peoples of the world, in which hopefully the year of return will prove to be an important ingredient. And timing is important because in the United States, I mean, we're 24 years away from America becoming a nation, majority of people of color. By 2043, that's going to happen. It's between Latinos, African Americans, Asian, Native Americans will be the majority in the country. Uh, you look at what's happening in Europe as well. Uh, many of those countries are freaking out because the reality is in Germany, in Italy, in those countries, whites are not, they, 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 you know, their population is shrinking. And so, you know, the next generation will be a generation that already the world is two thirds people of color. But when you talk about Western countries, they're going to be dominant. And so to me, this is where these 24 years, the next quarter of a, uh, quarter of a century to me is important for, for African-Americans, other people of color to really say, let's be in position to assume power and not be in a situation where we have numerical numbers, unfortunately, but not have uh, the opportunities controlling the political and economic levers. So the solution... <clears throat> For me, the solution is the development of this continent. That is the catalyst. That is what is going to make the difference in this trajectory that you've outlined, is the development of Africa. And I think that the next, this century, the, the reordering and reorganization of the world that is going to take place, the most significant contribution is going to be made from this continent. And once we have turned on the key, we have found the key, for our own organization, for the organization of the black peoples of the world. We're going to make a significant difference to the way the world has worked up till now. Last question for you, Reverend Leon Sullivan, uh, for a long time, was about forging those relationships. Uh, do you plan, I understand next year's an election year, you'll be busy here, but do you, but do you plan to, to organize, let's say, a one-day or a two-day uh, conference in the United States that not driven by the government, but really uh, pulling together uh, the best and brightest, those minds, economic and culture of African Americans uh, and bringing uh, others as well. To say, Let's idea. sit down and make it happen. I, have, I think it's a very good idea. And these are the things that uh, Akusi Ajiman and the people who are going to be in the forefront of what we're doing here are already trying to organize and deal with. But I think it's an excellent idea where we need to explore this and other ideas as well so that we continue to keep alive this intercourse, this bridge across the Atlantic. We have to make sure that it is in place and that it's a two-way bridge all the time where we work. Well, we'll be there to live stream the whole event so everybody can see it and That'd participate. So we'll do That's that. And, exactly. and I'll be back soon because uh, the... Uh, the Asante King is a big time golfer and so am I. Oh, I and, see. And so uh, when he asked, when I told him I have a 6.6 .6 handicap, his eyes lit up and he said, when are you leaving? Let's play. So he wanted to play this morning, but I had to be at your breakfast. Uh, so I have to come back uh, so he and I can hit the golf course. It's good. It's good. But it's good of you to have come. Absolutely. And we expect to see a lot of you. I appreciate it. Months and years ahead. We'll be back. It's Mr. Good. President, thanks a lot. Thank you very I much. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
So we certainly appreciate the president of Ghana for that exclusive interview. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.